Be sure that you have all the necessary tools and materials on hand before beginning the construction of your pool. Not having the appropriate items on hand when they are called for can make the job much more difficult than it needs to be. If you have not already done so, separate the different kinds of hardware. This will make it easier to find the necessary pieces when they are called for and help you to become familiar with the different types of hardware you will be using during the assembly of your pool. In choosing the site to assemble your pool, you want to avoid areas with steep slopes or underground obstructions. You also must be sure that the site you choose complies with all state and local codes. A transit is the easiest and most precise way to tell you how level your site is. Transits are easy to use and can be rented at most local equipment rental outlets. If you do not have access to a transit, a long straight board with a carpenter's level will do the job. Once you have determined exactly where your pool will be going, remove all of the sod from inside that area. The pool cannot be installed on top of any grass. A great tool for removing sod quickly and neatly is a sod cutter. This is also a tool that can be rented at a local equipment rental center and you can be taught easily how to use it in a matter of minutes. If you do not have a sod cutter, this can be done manually by using a shovel. It is important that you dig down the high areas and do not build up the low areas. Building up the low areas will cause the pool to settle and possibly cause major problems down the road. The entire area should be within one inch of being perfectly level before proceeding to the next step. Measure off from the ends of your site and stake off the center point for your pool. Bring your pre-assembled buttress or your buttress-free assemblies onto the site. Using your stake center point as a guide, lay out the assemblies for your size pool as per your installation instruction booklet. Attach the straight side bottom rail connectors to the strap end channels as we show here. There are two different size straps packed with each pool. Each strap is marked with a part number and the length. Consult your instruction booklet to make sure you are using the correct size and quantities of strap sections for your pool. Assemble straps using half inch long bolts and nuts. Make sure they are as tight as possible using hand tools. Most oval pools have three different length bottom rails. They're color-coded by length on one end. The corner bottom rails are used on most size ovals as a transition piece from the straight sides to the curved sides. The straight side bottom rails are used between each of the straight side upright assemblies. The curved side bottom rails are the longest ones, and they are used to form the curved sides of your pool.
Please be aware that some pools use resin bottom rails instead of the metal rails. Be sure you are using the correct bottom rails and not the stabilizer rails. Most stabilizer rails for the curved sides have a male and female end, so they are crimped on one side. These rails are also smaller in size than the bottom rails are. There are a few different kinds of bottom plates that we use. The most common is the metal bottom plate. Some pools use a resin bottom plate. Here is an example. Others will use a resin bottom cuff. Here is an example. Assemble your bottom track by sliding the bottom rail into the bottom plate up to the dimple on the plate. This is done exactly the same way for pools with resin bottom plates and rails. Resin bottom cuff pools are also done in the same fashion. Most oval pools have four different length stabilizer rails. The stabilizers are the rails with the smaller profile, and they are usually unpainted. These rails will also be color coded by size. Do not use these rails on the bottom of the pool. Install the straight side bottom rails by inserting them into the straight side bottom rail connectors and pushing them down. This will help you establish the correct spacing between the straight side assemblies. In order to make sure the straight side uprights are parallel with each other, we measure the distance from the house to each upright, making sure each measurement is the same. If you are not close enough to an existing structure, such as a house or fence, to do this, you can draw a string along the straight sides to get the same effect. Each of the strap end channels should be sitting 42 inches on center from the channel or channels next to it. Measure from the first straight side upright on one side to the last straight side upright on the opposite side. Then measure the two opposite uprights. The measurements should be identical. If they are not, you should move the uprights until those measurements are the same. Once you are confident that everything is laid out properly, check the site again to see how level it is. You should now temporarily remove the straight side bottom rails so that you can level the strap end channels. Mark the area around the strap end channel so that you know where to dig. The strap end channel is 2 inches tall, so you will need to trench out a 2 inch deep area where the strap end channel sits, so that the top of the strap end channel is flush with the top of the ground. Place the oval upright assembly into the trench. Make sure the upright is level using a carpenter's level.
Repeat this process for all assemblies. Clean up and level the area between the oval upright assemblies and replace the straight side bottom rails so that they are sitting flat on the ground. Clean up the areas between the strap end channels inside the pool so the pressure plates will also sit flat on the ground. Lay out the pressure plates so that the holes in the center of each plate line up with the holes in the center of each strap end channel. Secure pressure plates to the strap end channels using two number 12 screws in each. Connect the pressure plates to each other using three number 12 screws at each point that the plates overlap each other. Again, measure the diagonals of your pool to make sure that the straight sides are still square, as demonstrated earlier. Make any necessary adjustments at this point if they are not. Place a patio block under the outside end of the strap end channel. Make sure that the block is level in all directions so that the channel sits flat on the block. Recheck that the oval upright is still level. Backfill the area where the block has been placed. You should completely cover the strap end channel outside of the pool. Cart the sand or pool base into the pool area. Thoroughly pack the sand or base into the trenches. Be sure to completely fill in the areas under the pressure plates to avoid getting sinkholes after the pool is filled with water. Spread the sand or pool base equally throughout the pool area. Check the measurement from the first straight side upright to one of the curved side bottom plates or cuffs. Then, Check the same measurement from the opposite straight side upright and curved bottom plate. If these measurements are equal, you can secure your corner bottom rails to the straight side bottom rail connectors and stake the curved side bottom track into place. Level each of the bottom plates or bottom cuffs. All of these parts should be within a half inch of each other and the tops of the strap end channels.
Place a patio block under each of the bottom plates or cuffs. The block should be recessed into the ground so the track is still sitting on solid ground. Make sure the block is level in all directions. Once the block is in, recheck the level of the plate or cuff to make sure it's at the same height as it was before you put the block down. Again, this can be done without a transit. You can use a long straight board and a carpenter's level to do this job. We recommend using landscaping stakes with C-clamps around the pool area to help hold the wall during the installation. Bring the pool wall into the pool area using a flattened carton to rest it on. Make sure the skimmer cutout is on the top portion of the wall. Begin by placing the wall into the track at the center of a bottom plate or cuff. Continue inserting the wall into the track around the pool, clamping it as you go. If the skimmer or return cutout fall over a bottom plate, you will need to move the wall and expose the wall joint to clear them. If you get to the end and the wall does not properly line up, you can pull the wall back and move the curbside bottom rails in or out of the bottom plates or cuffs to get the necessary adjustment. This should be done evenly around the pool and not just where the wall joint lies. If your pool has a single row of wall bars, they will be pre-attached with rivets. Simply line up the two sections so that the aluminum wall bars do not touch each other. Secure using the wall bolts and nuts. You must have a bolt in every hole or your pool will break. All nuts should be as tight as possible using hand tools. Cover all the bolt heads inside of your pool using three layers of duct tape to protect the liner from edges of the hardware or any burrs created by the screwdriver. With a staggered wall bar system, the wall bars are not pre-attached. Line up the two sections of the wall so they are touching each other. Place one wall bar on the inside of the pool and one on the outside of the pool wall. Connect them using the wall bolts and nuts. The wall bars must not touch each other or your pool will break. All holes must have securely tightened nuts and bolts, and all hardware should be as tight as possible using hand tools. Cover all the bolt heads inside of your pool using three layers of duct tape to protect the liner from edges of the hardware or any burrs created by the screwdriver. Install the curved side uprights onto the bottom plates. The top of the upright usually can be determined by an extra hole in the center 
or on each side for the top covers. The uprights are secured to the bottom plate using number 10 screws. If your pool has bottom cuffs, there is no hardware necessary to secure the uprights. Simply line the upright into the bottom cuff and snap it down into place. When done properly, you should see all of the tabs going through the holes in the upright. Build a 6 to 8 inch high cove along the inside of the pool wall. Pack down the cove you have built using a tamp or trowel. Be careful not to scratch the pool wall. Smooth out the sand or pool base using a rake. If you are using a snap bead liner, place the beaded liner track over the top of the pool wall as we demonstrate here. Place the 8 inch long stabilizer rails over the top of the beaded liner track at each straight side upright. Clip the straight side top plate over the 8 inch stabilizer rail and secure it to the straight side upright using number 10 screws. Slide the 33 inch long stabilizer rails between each of the 8 inch long stabilizer rails. Install the curved side stabilizer rails. These rails will telescope into each other approximately 1 inch, forming continuous arcs around the curved sides of the pool. Once all the stabilizer rails are on, you will no longer need the landscaping stakes and C clamps. Install the curved top plate by snapping it over the stabilizer rail and securing it to the upright using number 10 screws. Make sure the uprights are perfectly straight up and down using a carpenter's level. Be sure to wet the sand prior to tamping it. This will help the sand pack better. Tamp the entire bottom of your pool. Doing this will help reduce footprints in the sand and provide a firm and even bottom for your pool. Once the tamping is complete, you should lightly sweep the sand base so that you brush away any uneven lines caused during tamping. Unpack the liner from its box. Laying it out in the sun for a few minutes will make it easier to work with.
If you have a unibead liner and want to use it with a beaded liner track, you need to cut off the top portion of the bead at the line on the bead. Once you start taking it off with a razor for a couple of inches, you will be able to peel the remainder of the bead off. You want to re-roll the liner in a fashion that will be easy for you to work with in the pool. Bring the liner into the pool and spread it out evenly. Do not walk on the liner with your shoes on. Please be aware that there are a few different kinds of liners that are popular in today's market. The V-bead liner has a bead which hangs directly on the pool wall. There is no coping used with this type of liner. The stabilizer rails will be secured directly on top of the V-bead itself. The snap bead liner requires a separate bead track. The track is installed on top of the pool wall and the snap bead liner is snapped into this track. Overlap liners are hung over the pool wall and secured in place using plastic coping strips. Unibead liners can be used as either V-bead or snap bead liners. They come out of the box as a V-bead liner. You can also cut and peel away the V-bead portion, leaving you with a snap bead liner, as we have done here. Install the top rails loosely using number 10 screws.
Once you have all of the rails in place, you can tighten down all of the screws. If your pool has a resin top rail, this step will be done the same way. but you will use a number 10 screw that is one inch long and has a washer attached to it. Please notice that there are different top covers for the straight side and curved side as we show here. There are many versions of top covers. Refer to the final step in your instruction booklet to ensure you do yours correctly. Most have two halves, like this one. The top covers usually call for number 12 screws, but this is not always the case. Begin filling the pool slowly. It is during this first inch of filling that you will still be able to work out the wrinkles by kicking them to the outside of the pool. After you are satisfied with the bottom of the liner, you can fill the pool halfway. At that point, consult the separate skimmer instructions on how to install your skimmer and return fittings. Once they are on, you can attach your filter system and fill the pool the remainder of the way. Before anyone uses the pool, you need to install the safety labels packed in the yellow envelope that came with your pool. If you do not have these labels, please contact your dealer or the manufacturer and you will be given another set at no charge. Your warranty will be voided if these labels are not installed. The large sticker goes on the outside wall of the pool directly next to the entry system. This should be visible to anyone about to enter the pool. The smaller label is attached on the liner, above the water line, directly opposite the pool's entry point, again being visible to anyone entering the pool. See the installation instruction booklet for any additional safety precautions. Never leave children unattended in the pool area. Never leave open access to the pool when there is no supervision present. Follow all local laws and regulations. Obtain all required permits before building your swimming pool. Always use common sense while in or around a swimming pool. Never jump or dive into an above ground swimming pool. Never sit, stand, or walk on the top rails of an above